the loudspeaker spoke up and said. Greetings from just off Orwell Lane. Universal Studios' fourth Too Real Mystery, and the second to be highlighted in this series, is again from 1931. With a story framed upon Judson P. Phillips' The House of Death, with a screenplay by Samuel Friedman, director Kurt Newman brings a bit more form and depth to this short than our previous example, Burglar to the Rescue. Frank Reddick again remains uncredited for his stellar and notable work as the Shadow's voice, providing that narration and commentary that frames out the short so exceptionally well. Allow the fog to clear and the curtain to rise for House of Mystery, originally released on December 16th, 1931. Enjoy. Just a minute, Joe. Hmm? You know, it's too far to walk to the village tonight. Well, what's the matter with camping out? Well, that's all right with me. Look. Why, that's the old Craig cabin. Supposed to be haunted. Well, what difference does that make? It's better than sleeping out on the cold ground. Come on. A few spooks might be interesting. the car. The Craig Summer Homes in the neighborhood, we can phone from there. Good. Well, good evening, Mr. Craig. My name is Moore, the district attorney's office. This is Sherry Franklin. Yes? We were hunting and found the body of a murdered woman in your cabin. A murder? In my cabin? A young woman, apparently beaten to death. Just a moment. Describe the woman. An attractive brunette, about 25. Why? Why, that description fits my daughter-in-law, Sharon. But it can't be her. My son put her on the train for the city this morning. Dad, Dad, Sharon's been murdered. Oh, 
This is a terrible blow to my son, gentlemen. Leave us alone for a few moments, please. I can't understand how that boy discovered his wife dead. Without our seeing him in the cabin or passing him on the way. Douglas. Are you sure you put Sharon on the train this morning? Well, certainly, Dad. Well, you don't suppose that I... I believe you, son. But you've been acting strangely lately. We'd like to talk to your son for a moment. Alone, if you don't mind. Would you mind closing the door, Mr. Craig? Say you put your wife on the train this morning. Yes, the 9.30 train. What did you do after the train left? I remained in the village. I wanted to see Gerald Truesdale. Who's he? He's an actor. What did you want to see him about? That's a personal matter I'd rather not discuss. It'll be to your advantage not to withhold any information. You realize you're under suspicion? Well, well, I've had a suspicion that Truesdale has been secretly meeting my wife. Hmm. Jealous, eh? Did you see him this morning? No. They told me at the village that he'd gone hunting. What did you do then? Came back home. Finally decided to walk through the woods, hoping I might find him. Well, that's all for the present. Come in. We'll expect you gentlemen to remain here until we return. I saw that butler sneak out through the woods in the direction of the cabin. Caught with the goods. What have you got in those bags? Put them down there. Open them up. Come on. <laughs> you are a marked man here. 
Higgins. You cannot escape the law. <laughs> He won't get far. Let's see what he had in those bags. Let's take him over by the light there, Moore. Hey, Joe. Hey, Truesdale. Truesdale. He's the man we want. Let's see if we can catch him down at the village. All right. Come on. If the information the clerk gives us is correct, Truesdale ought to be here shortly. Been waiting about two hours. That looks like one of Craig's cars coming now. You wait inside, Constable. Mr. John Craig sent you this money, Truesdale. You know the instructions. Get out of the country quick. All right, pick them up. You try and get away a second time, and I'll plug you. Get out. This is John Craig's car, isn't it, Constable? Yes. Uh, Constable, lock these men up and hold them for further instructions. Come on. <laughs> the arm of the law is reaching for you, John Craig. Are you prepared? <laughs> Mr. Craig, we'll have to hold you while we're investigating this murder. On what grounds? We saw your butler hand Truesdale a roll of money with instructions from you to get out of the country. You can't pin this on Higgins. He's innocent. I'll explain now. Much against my wishes, my only son, Douglas, married Sharon. I knew she'd bring misery into his life. They got along fairly well until Truesdale came to this town. Sharon. Hello, honey. I can't go with you tonight, Jerry. We're being watched. In the morning, Douglas is going to take me to the station. But instead of going to the city, I'll slip off the train at the first stop. Meet me there and we'll go to the cabin. All right. So, uh, Douglas put her on the train this morning. She presumably left the train at the next station where she met Truesdale, and they motored back to the cabin. Higgins' suspicions were aroused, and... He knew Douglas was headed for the cabin, and he wanted to prevent him from discovering the unfaithfulness of his wife and save the boy a heartache. So he hurried back to the cabin to warn Sharon. You don't know how glad I am to get away from here, Jerry. I'm sick and tired of that entire Craig outfit. Come 
cool down, Truesdale. Sharon, I'll take care of her. Get out. Young Craig is on his way here. He rushed back here and had just finished telling me what happened when you gentlemen entered. <laughs> yes, you have told the truth, John Craig. The shadow knows. <laughs>